we talk about some of the motivation for data science, etc. And then we will finish this class and then we will continue next week. Um, so yeah, I talk about myself and you can learn a lot about me uh, on this one. I, this uh, slides originally are prepared by Professor uh, Amal Deshpande. I have uh, changed them quite a bit, some of them, but still, I mean, some of the credits actually goes to him. And here, this is for lecture one and two. Okay, uh, so, so uh, this is I mean, a little bit about me. I got my PhD 2005 at MIT and professor UMD for 2010. These are some of the areas that I'm working, algorithms, game theory, and game theory means essential action design and all these kind of advertisement things. Social network, cloud computing, machine learning, and system design, these are more recent ones. Some of the awards, et cetera, that I mean, got it and but honored for them. And uh, more importantly, I think this is a uh, industry experience. I mean, these big companies like IBM, Microsoft, AT&T, Google, Amazon, Overstock, and consulting with others. These are some of the things that I have done it. And uh, this is, I mean, and try, as I mentioned, my motivation to teach this course is that I can transfer that knowledge essentially for the people and fully record it somewhere that can be useful for others. Mm. Good. So uh, let's talk about the motivation for this thing. Good. So here we have a explosion of data in, in pretty much every domain. So in every domain, essentially, we have lots of data. And this is a particular thing are the sensors. that we have it, these are sensors all over the place. Not only sensors, the cameras nowadays. Cameras are everywhere. And we need to essentially analyze them. Uh, this is an interesting thing. So of course we have like all these smartphones and the people are uploading all these kind of videos, YouTube, et cetera, and take the photos, take the videos. And again, these videos now, uh, thanks to this kind of uh, speech to text, technology, we can get the transcript of them. And uh, now these are information and we can use them. It, we have uh, uh, lots of, for example, social networks, that's another example, uh, Facebook in particular, or other ones like a Snap or uh, you name it essentially even LinkedIn and others essential. These are all things. There are lots of information that are there. And of course, there are lots of uh, scientific experiments and um, simulations that all of them essentially produces lots of data. There's another one like Internet of the Things that essentially your refrigerator can talk with your oven and talk with your cell phone, etc. That somehow it is already there as well. <clears throat> Some of this, for example, you can, almost everything can be connected to Internet nowadays. Uh, just adding uh, some of this, uh, I mean, some more examples, which is uh, interesting here. Uh, this uh, about the astronomical data that we have. And uh, this is, uh, I was in some talk by a person actually, I think, expert in the area of uh, astronomy. And this was uh, a few years ago, even. And that was an interesting view, essentially. He said that, uh, you see, I mean, how much data we have. He was talking about, I mean, like, what are the famous telescopes that we have? James Webb is the recent one, and before was the Hubble. And at that time, there was no James Webb. There was just Hubble. He said that one of the issues that, I mean, the computation is important is that these guys, they are taking this, I mean, very high resolution. <laughs> the video of, or the photos of the, essentially, sky at any time. And it is interesting that they are producing I mean, a lot of data, but we don't have that much computation, essentially, to see the events. 
for one thing which is very important for them essentially then the say for example when a star is born or dies essentially not the movie the actual thing but uh, so uh, uh, sometimes essentially you will i mean see these are the events that are important essentially so, and they may catch it that these are all in this thing that they, that you took it but it takes a lot of computation to find that event because it's so much data and they don't I mean, it's a lot of process that you need to do that so uh, uh, again so this is even this thing that when we talk about hubble on james web this is the, actually the main thing is that pr uh, processing this data and get some useful thing is very important like we can essentially everything now it is on the videos etc but getting some useful information is quite non -trivial. Another thing which is uh, very important also, this is also a bit scary, about the date of vacation. <laughs> what is the date of vacation? Is that essentially you can create an avatar of a person by getting the data from that person and essentially uh, getting the, I mean, record all aspects of the life and then turn it into data. This, the one that I have mentioned, essentially 100 years from now, there would be a person who can answer like me to probably the grand grandchildren. Same accent. That's some kind of avatar, actually, that you can get it from this data. But, uh, and as I mentioned, it is now almost possible. But actually, it was already possible. And this is the scary part. Google has such an avatar. Today. Amazon has such an avatar. Like essentially from the data that you gave Google or Facebook, they already created a person like you. And this is, I will say, at the first time, because I have designed and like different <laughs> algorithm in this company, essentially. Uh, it is, I mean, it's not the case that, I mean, it would be something in the future. All advertisement that you are seeing at Amazon or Facebook, all of them are based on, I mean, you know exactly who are you, essentially. They may know probably better than you that you like some of the movies, etc. So they have all this data. And I think this was the scary part that I have mentioned also other things that the people, I mean, think about, I mean, okay, the chat GPT is very smart, but, but still we have a control on them. Is it true, really? That but still we have, I mean, time to control them, the robots. Because what is the danger? The danger is that, I mean, the robots become in control. And then we are, I mean, the same role that animals are playing to us, we are playing to robots. They are smarter things. And the smarter things generally, they will be the dominant creatures. Somebody said, no, I mean, maybe, no, we are not there. The good thing is that we can put something at the control, essentially. But the issue is that, we are already at the hands of robots. A good example I will tell you. Uh, so you may call, I mean, like maybe 10 years ago, you called the bank and okay, there was some fee for me essentially. Can you just reverse that fee? And say, okay, yeah, sure, I can give you some credit for you. Maybe. This time say, no, I, mean, this, I cannot do, sorry, because this is the thing, a system does not allow me. That person cannot do anything. Another example I will tell you, I mean, that I have I mean, experienced like, for example, you can, I mean, the robots decide whether you can have a nice house or not. How come? They decide what is your credit score. If your credit score is not good, then you cannot get the mortgage, especially with, with such kind of high interest because they, you, are, you cannot be qualified. It means that you cannot have a nice house. And you cannot change it at all. Good luck to go and try to change your credit score. Because you don't know what are these algorithms that they are using, essentially. And I have some evidence for some of this. Actually, these algorithms are quite crazy, actually, that they are missing some things, some clear things, essentially. But you cannot do that because your credit comes down, then you cannot do anything. And these are the examples. I mean, the other thing, I don't know. Uh, nowadays, uh, even... Uh, you know, a lot of these companies, for example, Uber or others, they even, or Google, they, they don't even allow you to talk with a live person. It would be very hard. You only can talk with chat box. They decide what is this. So don't wait. I mean, I don't think, I mean, this essentially would be <laughs> like, 
I mean, try to, I mean, fool ourselves if we think that we are in control. Even, I mean, say that, for example, the not the previous election, the election before, said like, okay, Russia bots essentially were changing the election through, or, I mean, at some level, probably through at least in some other countries that they are meddling into elections, etc. These are the robots. Or Facebook, I mean, you, lots of people that you see that these are comments that are putting it are the robots that they are putting there. So they can change your opinion. Now, thanks to ChatGPT, they can write very nice, uh, essentially, um, uh, very nice and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, somehow, uh, they can very nicely argue that something is correct. And an average person can believe in it. I mean, there are all things are evidence. The ChatGPT, I think that was the case that they have uh, mentioned for this. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the, the lawyer essentially lost her license, his license, mainly because he used ChatGPT. Because it's so convincing, it's okay, this is good, but the only thing is they are not reality. These are just made up things, essentially. So this is something that you need to think about, especially data application. And all of them comes because of the data science. As I mentioned, the, the thing that they are talking about AI is nothing more than machine learning. And machine learning is nothing than data science. So in that sense, it's very good. We are talking about data science. At the same time, lots of these tools, I mean, maybe the whole data science field will, go, will be gone in five years because these robots can do it. There was one question in the previous class. Maybe you still we are in control. They can do the small thing, but we can decide the big thing. But if they can do the small things, they can do the big things as well. And so this is a bit unfortunate things, but is the reality essentially. And the issue that I mean, so we are essentially giving some introduction to this one. Uh, I mean, to understand the problem. And again, uh, the part that I have mentioned, there is no book for this class or something like because the technology changes so much essentially. And you, but you need to think about it and you should adopt to the new technology. That's the main thing essentially that you should get it from. These are some guides that I'm giving to you. That's the best that I can do. So, and again, so the whole idea of data science is that you are essentially presenting this data. These are the data that you will get it from something, you will clean it, et cetera. And then you want to get some kind of actionable uh, insight or scientific knowledge from this data. How can you do that? So you need to process them and do that. And of course, we have it more, more and more sophisticated approaches to do that. Lots of essentially machine learning things that are. And of course, the data volume expected to get much worse essentially, because just think about the YouTube things. And uh, like I started programming around uh, 19, when I was 10 years old essentially, I don't know. So something like 34 years ago. And I can say at that time, you wanted to have a, I remember that I have a computer that its memory was only 40 megabytes, 40 megabytes. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to have C++ compiler. I couldn't run it, it, was, it needed more than that. I was using this floppy disk essentially, and they had bad sectors essentially. And then they, they, they think that the technology that I used, there was some software that they could increase the size of the hard disk Essentially, by compressing it more, it became slower, but it allowed you the six, like 40 megabytes, maybe you could do 60, 70 things. I have done it such that I could es essentially install Borland C with this stupid floppy disk because that was like horrible. You will just, you cannot imagine, I don't know, uh, like, I don't know how many of you have been at that time even, but uh, this floppy disk, you will do it. And then there were for, I think, like 20 disks, you need to put it one after the other to install that. And the worst thing is that the 19 one had a bad sector. So then everything will be gone. Like two hours, three hours of your time will be gone. You need to go see whether you can find one. And the whole city that I was there, they, there was all of them are copy of each other. So all of them have that bad sector. So I need to wait for a few weeks to get, I mean, maybe you think that does not have this problem. And it is like this one, you now imagine you will laugh at it. I mean, so one, <laughs> that 40 megabytes is nothing. You just take a photo essentially with your cell phone. It is already five megabytes, let alone the videos that you will take. So we had, I mean, and this is like the one we had 
gone so much more essentially, and we are continuing it. And processing this data, as I mentioned, for example, for dual this, uh, this uh, uh, like in astronomy, it is very, very important. And lots of other places. It is money essentially uh, for this datafication. So it, it is very important at Google or Amazon for their advertisement. So Google, of course, you have seen there are three types of advertisement. The display ad that you have seen it, there. you will go there, there is something there. It is search ad. Search ad is the one that when you search at Google, it shows some advertisement. And another one, it is, uh, I mean, more recently, actually become this is a sponsored product or a sponsored ad. A sponsored ad, if you go to Amazon, you will see some place they say a sponsored. Or like this is the Wayfair or other, you will see that. It's called a, a, a sponsor. Those are the people that they are actually paying to be there. They're good actually, but they are, uh, the people pay that. And these are like, this. thanks to this, actually Amazon now is the third big player in advertisement after Google and Facebook. It was not like that, Microsoft and others, but now Amazon, the people are doing that. So they, it is very important that they can clear a better avatar of you such that they know what is the chance that you will click on this or what is the chance that they will, you will buy this element. Because that turns into the money. And this is a tr trillion dollar business essentially. A four V's of big data, these are important ones. Of course, I mean the volume. Uh, so it's like essentially a scientific data, 1.5 gigabyte uh, per, uh, for genome. And that can be sequenced say, in half an hour essentially. Or that the number of tweets, like 500 million, this is uh, that of 2013. I mean, now you can find a few, like a few times this one. Uh, like for example, again, as of 2012, there was 2.5 exabyte of data created every day. But again, this was 2012. You can get the things here. What is the volume of this big data? There is a variety. Variety essentially means that you may get this data from different sources. Uh, and this, like essentially a person can be described from lots of angles. And this data can become some of them structured data, some of the photos, videos, emails, uh, spreadsheets, everything that you can combine all of them into essentially. And they, that's the one to create an avatar for this. Uh, Velocity. Velocity is another thing is that also that is important. So variety is that what are the source of the data and what are the format of the data uh, or this kind of uh, multimodal that you can consider from different sources. It there is a velocity. Velocity essentially says that, I mean, uh, sometimes this data that it will be generated, how fast you need to consume it. Uh, for example, there are some real-time data that some of these sensors, etc., that you need to process it right away. And these are some of a streaming algorithm that will be used essentially for them. Another example, essentially, this advertisement again. So when you go to some website, all of this when they show some advertisement, a sponsor ad or display or search ad or anything, the typical thing is that you need to decide who whose advertisement I should show in this slot. And everything should be uh, decided in something like a, uh, between 20 milliseconds to at most 120 milliseconds, some range like that. And then there are a huge data, like this number of display ads, essentially, I don't know, maybe three, four years ago, it was something like 60 billion per hour, essentially, slots and the auctions for showing this. The people were seeing and these are the, just for the display ads. So the huge data, and I mean, and this should be processed very fast. So all this data that you have, it, you need to just process it and say, who is the, uh, on this guy, whose data I should show such that I will get the maximum money out of the advertiser. Uh, and last but not least, essentially the veracity of the data. And that essentially this data that you have, how do you decide, I mean, to what data you should trust? Or if the, is there any noise here or missing values here? So these are the things that you need to essentially decide. And these are like any data, big data that you have, it these are important problems that you need to deal with. David, I mean, there are 
are different terms. They were using uh, big data and then data science. And there are other things like data analytics, data mining, business intelligence. All of them are essentially referring to the same thing. And again, even nowadays they are using AI or uh, ML. All of them are essentially the same. Thing. Uh, I think this is uh, from Professor uh, Zico Qualter, actually. That I had a pleasure actually to working with him on some projects. And this is the interesting thing that he mentioned. He said, Data science is the application of computational and statistical techniques to address or gain marginal or scientific insight into some problem in the real. That's the one definition that you can actually say that. And this, uh, these are, you need to essentially do some techniques and uh, tools. That's the thing that we discuss essentially near future. And then uh, how you can make to essentially gain insight. That essentially means that you need to have some machine learning things. And I mean, also part of the insight also presentation or visualization that you will have. So that's, again, you will see the whole picture that I mentioned. What I just uh, data scientists call the sexiest job of the 21st century. Uh, I mean, is it, this was like from Business Insider. Data, data scientist is like the best thing. Uh, overall job score is 4.8, the first job. Is it the case now? I'm not sure. Because of all this, but lots of this, actually you can do it again with ChatGPT. But lots of this data you can, like even, uh, uh, like these are the instructions because these are like some of the programs and these programs, uh, like when I was like 2017 at Google, it was TensorFlow there. And then I was essentially there until midnight to understand TensorFlow and write the program and set up there. But nowadays, I mean, you will just do, I mean, ChatGPT and just produce a state of the art in instruction and much simpler. There are lots of packages that have been developed. So you really don't need to do, know some of the insight of this. I think one thing that currently is a hot thing to anyone who knows about natural language processing and this kind of generative AI. That's the one that everyone wants. Or if you are can generate something, <laughs> these GPUs that currently NVIDIA is doing that. And the stock share went almost tripled this year. This is the one, and again, changes the technology. Uh, so there are uh, many definitions essentially uh, here. And in general, I think uh, when we talk about the data science, uh, it is, you should consider that this is very broad and it is generally larger than a single discipline. So there are lots of disciplines. That, and he was talking about, uh, like for example, statistical things and others in the previous slide that we mentioned from uh, Professor uh, Zico. And this is, uh, it is broader and it is interdisciplinary. So it means that, I mean, you are using a statistics, computer science, operation research, and machine learning, data warehousing, visualization, mathematics, information science, lots of them. And we try to essentially make all of this data. It is grounded the fact that I have lots of data. How can I get essentially some insight? This insight generally, you can't even think about prediction. That's generally the meaning of that. Can I do a good prediction of the future? For example, I mentioned this data verification is that you have the data, you have the record of this particular person, I want to say that now if I show this advertisement, what is the probability that this guy click on it? Or this person, I mean, buy this item? Because if that person clicks on it, I will get some money, like here, Amazon. Or if it buys it, again, I get some money, for example, in the case of Amazon, because I get some service fee and some other things that are on top of it. And then you need to maybe put some kind of trade off between this. So uh, this is another, I mean, interesting thing. Again, some view by uh, Drew Conway uh, that he mentioned essentially there are hacking skills that people have it. This is some math and statistics knowledge. And this is substantive expertise. Like, you know, for example, you know about the chemical, about uh, like, you know, chemistry, biology, etc. And then if you consider like somehow data science is intersection of all of them, you need hacking a skill, you need to know a lot of math and statistics, and you need to do some knowledge about the field, like biology, chemistry, physics, etc. But if you have one, for example, hacking a skill and math, that would be machine learning. 
if it is substantive expertise plus maths, and you can do that, that would be general traditional research. And he mentioned if you have hacking skill and substantive expertise, that would be danger zone, essentially. That's because you can do something that is really not very desired. Some of the, some other views. I try to give the different views. I think that's a nice diagram. I mean, I don't go through the, all of it, but in general, it shows that I mean, some of the height stuff that some of this uh, uh, people essentially uh, over time. Uh, we had lots of technology things essentially 3D. Printing, 4D printing, I don't know. Uh, or, uh, for example, uh, we had a virtual reality or augmented reality. But anyway, these are some of the uh, uh, lives that I had it there it, talking about virtual realities. Like, what is the augmented reality? These are actually nice ones because we can uh, go and see the videos that I have it with the experts in the field. And uh, so some of them essentially become real world, uh, like, uh, so some there are some years essentially for this to become essentially mainstream adaptation, like some less than two years, some two to five years, and some essentially we can some of them can essentially become obsolete before going to mean that dies essentially. These are for different technology it is mentioned. And the question that that data science is one of them or not. I would say I mean not essentially, but given the fact that you are seeing essentially what did happen essentially to chat GPT uh, or other things. So this was one of the things actually that changed the life of the people. And so these are the different technology, but I think this is, I don't believe it is in a hype and you see that it actually changed, even changed my view from last year. Uh, I mean, one other, for example, technology I can mention that is another good example of this. For example, uh, some, as I mentioned, we had a good uh, things about, I mentioned about the, uh, like the battery technology, or I mentioned about this kind of sensing that still robots are quite far from. Or another things actually is interesting is even self-driving actually. Self-driving also, I had, I mean, uh, some friends, at, Uber and I actually I was in some Uber meeting as well at that time. And this was the thing that back in 2017, Uber planned that by 2019 have not only self-driving cars, but also all the trucks which are self-driving. What did happen? I think that was like two years ago. Uber sold all the technology to forgot the name of the company. They sold all the technology. So they expected to do it actually this, but we are far from essentially self-driving the skill. So this is something that again, at that time the people say, oh, you are there if you are at Uber, essentially Uber, that was another actually, one of my students was making that the Uber actually making money from the people to kill their job. But didn't happen actually. <laughs> they get rid of it. I mean, they somehow uh, become uh, disappointed. I mean, they couldn't get that self-driving to a reasonable thing. There are some, I mean, this is kind of augmented self-driving already there. Uh, I don't know how many of you have used essentially this one. If you have like, these new cars, they, all of them, they have this kind of augmented things. They can have it is something called um, uh, augmented crews, I think. Or adoptive crews that's actually very interesting or you can put you in lane etc but it's still not self-driving car and we are far from there i will say uh, probably because i mean because somehow the people are crazy if they were just robots maybe we already had the such kind of self-providing but i mean the people are essentially doing more innovative or sometimes destructive movements that is very hard to predict this. So this is another technology which is very important and still we are far from the essentially self-driving car. Uh, good. So uh, I think uh, this is uh, the one that I, I think I will uh, stop here. And uh, like if we will discuss more about this hyper stuff, um, 
and uh, data science, machine learning, and the relation, etc. Uh, in the next uh, session. And so, 